What's up guys? So recently I've been getting a lot of questions about the chain kit that I'm running. So today I'm going to answer a few questions. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. And please, if you guys enjoy the video, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. So before I start the video, I actually had another video planned. I was going to install this Chopper Haas front motor mount for 06 and up Dynas, but I ordered a scissor jack off of Amazon and instead of sending me a scissor jack, they actually sent me a bearing press kit. And I'm not gonna be able to shoot that video today, so instead I'm gonna bring you guys a chain kit review. All right guys, so in this video, the first thing I wanna go over is the chain kit that I went with myself, and then I'm gonna move on to the pros and the cons that I came up with. So the first thing that I'm gonna go over is the tooth count that I went with. So I went with a 24 in front and a 51 in the rear, and I think when I was looking at the site, I was looking for whatever was closest to stock because you know I'm not a huge wheelie guy, and the freeways out here were honestly like really slow, so they had a freeway flyer, and they had a, uh, a torque kit, and I was just looking for something in the middle to keep it as close to stock, you know, and maybe get the best of both worlds. And I think I found that with this chain kit. So this is a 24 up front and a 51. So now I'm gonna get into the actual sprockets that they use. So up front, which you're not gonna be able to see because it's behind the primary and this thing sucks to get to. If you watch our uh, install video, which I'll put up there on the screen, you have to take all of this stuff off to get to it. But they use a PBI front sprocket, which I think is honestly, it's probably the standard which I've seen in the industry. Everybody uses the PBI front sprocket. It's just a really good sprocket that they offer. I think almost every chain kit that I've seen offers that one. So you don't even need to worry about that one. But I got a 24 up front. Moving on to the rear. Honestly, I didn't know how I really felt about this uh, sprocket. This is a Super Sprox uh, rear sprocket, and it's a two-piece sprocket. So that's why I was kind of hesitant when I was buying it, but I was like, you know what? These guys, I trust them. I think they know what they're talking about, uh, putting this chain kit together. So, so the middle ring is a lightweight aluminum, and the outer ring is like a fancy steel that, if you want to look it up, you can look it up on their site. And then the rivets are are steel all right so i was initially worried about the strength of the rear sprocket but after running this for over seven thousand miles already i'm not even questioning anymore i know this sprocket's gonna hold up uh going into the hardware that they use i think this is also really important because uh, i actually installed a chain kit on my buddy's bike and the rear sprocket bolts actually started coming loose so I'm glad that I went with the TMF because they offered that Air P hardware and I haven't even had to worry about it. You know, every once in a while, I'll just look back here and make sure that the bolts didn't come loose. But with this chain kit, honestly, I don't think I'm ever gonna have to worry about it unless I take it off. Then I'm gonna wanna replace it with new hardware. Never reuse that old hardware, but that's something to think about if you're gonna go with a chain kit. Make sure that they're not just giving you some crappy hardware to throw in that rear sprocket because if it comes loose, it's gonna freaking eat up your rear swing arm and then you'll probably end up needing to replace it. So that's definitely something to think about. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the rear spacer. And the reason that I'm talking about it is because I think it's honestly, it's pretty important after the second chain kit that I installed and some of the things that I noticed. So with this chain kit, I was able to use the factory Harley Davidson specs that were in the manual uh, when torquing down the rear sprocket. And if you're gonna install the rear sprocket yourself, make sure that you're using the manual and using the correct torque specs for this thing to hold on because I haven't had any issues and I've already ridden this over 7,000 miles. Now, my buddy who I helped him install his chain kit uh, he didn't use the same chain kit as me, and I think the rear the rear spacer, it came with its own torque specs and not the Harley-Davidson torque specs. And I think that's one of the reasons that the bolts started coming loose is because 
you can't torque those down as much as I was able to on these ones because the aluminum wasn't as strong. So the thread started to give if you went over the torque. So we were only able to torque it to whatever the torque specs were versus the Harley torque specs, which were higher. And that's one of the reasons I think that a lot of people's rear sprocket uh, starts coming loose and they're having issues is because they're not torquing it correctly. So if you're gonna torque the rear sprocket yourself, make sure that you use the Harley manual. It's really important. All right, guys, so the last thing that I wanna talk about is the chain itself. And I'm gonna bring out my phone real quick just so I don't butcher the name of this chain. And also, you can look up the specs yourself. I just wanted to say, with this chain, TMF is not skimping out. This chain retails anywhere from like $230 to $280. And that was one of the reasons I went with this chain kit is they didn't skimp out when they put a chain, when they put this chain in the chain kit. So this chain is a EK chain, 530 Z3D chain. And if you want to look up the specs, just Google that. So some of the things that you can expect uh, to read from this chain is, you know, it's got higher tensile strength than most chains out there. It's a really, really fancy O-ring chain. I think it's like a QX2 uh, O-ring chain and it's supposed to last 30% longer than the other chain that they had. So uh, what I'm trying to get at is that TMF provided a really good chain in this chain kit. And that's one of the reasons I decided to go with this chain. Personally, I've already ridden this bike uh, 7,000 miles with the chain on and I haven't even had to adjust it once. So that just goes to show you that this chain is holding up. So with all that being said, I'm gonna move on to the pros and cons of having a chain drive conversion on your bike. So the first thing I'm gonna go over are the cons of having a chain. So the first one that comes to my mind are these things are a lot messier than your average belt driven motorcycle. And the reason that is, is chain lube. So I've actually found with using this Amsoil chain lube that the chain doesn't actually sling as much grease or as much lube on the left side of my bike as other chain lubes that I've used. So I prefer to use Amsoil, but that's one of the cons to keep in mind if you're thinking about switching over the chain. You might have to clean your bike a lot more than just your average belt driven bike. So the second one that I'm gonna go over is maintenance. If you're one of those guys that just jumps on your motorcycle every single time, never looks at the bike at all, I don't think it changed for you because there is maintenance involved in having a chain compared to a belt. And the reason is these things are a lot more dangerous than a belt if you don't take care of it properly. And I'm gonna go over the reasons why. So there's gonna be a, a couple different times, so there's gonna be a couple different times you wanna lube your chain. Let's say you ride in the rain, after you dry the chain off and you clean it up, you're gonna to wanna to lube the chain. Or if you go on a really long ride, and what I consider is really long is like anything over, let's say 250 to like 400 miles. After that day, I'm probably gonna lube my chain, if not just clean it up so it stays clean. Um, there is such thing as over lubricating your chain though because all that lube is gonna attract dust, dirt, and grime. So if you're over lubricating it, you're just gonna actually, you could actually cause more wear. So the next thing that you're gonna have to check on your chain is the chain tension. And I set my chain tension to about an inch to an inch and a half. And I haven't had to actually adjust my chain slack since I, since I put the chain conversion kit on. And I've already been running this chain kit about 7,000 miles. So that just goes to show you that this chain kit is pretty badass in the fact that I haven't even had to adjust my chain since the first time that I put it on. The last thing I always check on my chain before I go out and ride is this guy right here. And what this is, is the master link. So I always make sure that my master link is still secure on my chain before I go out and ride. And the reason for that is, this is the weakest point of your chain. And if this thing fails, you know, your chain could lock up your rear tire or it could say hello and slap you in the back. So always make sure your master link is good. So I know you guys are probably like, come on Lego, you're supposed to be telling me why I should buy a chain kit so I can spend that $500 and lie to my wife about what I actually bought. So here it is. All right, so my first reason that you should do a chain conversion is let's be honest, it looks way more badass than a belt driven bike. I don't care who you are, it looks way better, all right? So that's my first reason. Now I'll move on to the more serious ones. Reason number two, 
With the belt, you lose a lot more torque to the rear wheel due to the belt actually stretching when you get on the throttle, your belt's gonna stretch a little bit. Now chains, they don't stretch, they wear. So you're not gonna lose as much torque to the rear wheel as you would with a belt. So that's another reason that you should have a chain kit bike. So my third reason is chains are way stronger than belts and they're able to handle a lot more horsepower than a belt would be able to. A uh, perfect example of that, my buddy, he did a uh, Energy One clutch upgrade to his clutch and he dropped the clutch because he was trying to do a wheelie and he ripped all the teeth right off of his belt. Now, if he had a chain, that wouldn't happen and that was one of the reasons we did a chain conversion on his bike and he hasn't had any issues since then besides cracking the uh, front mount on his bike, but shout out to him. So the last reason I have is if you ever break down on the side of the road with a belt, you're absolutely screwed because now you need to take the entire primary off in order to replace that. But if you have a chain, all, as long as nothing else gets damaged, all you have to do is run the chain over that front sprocket and the rear sprocket and you're good to go. You don't have to take off the entire primary. Now, when initially installing the chain, it's gonna be a lot more difficult than that. And you could also consider that even a con that a chain conversion is honestly, it's pretty tedious to install, but if you check out the video that I'm gonna put up there on the screen, it's gonna make it pretty easy for you. All right guys, so in this video, hopefully I answered some of the questions that you may have when you're looking for a chain drive conversion, and hopefully I made it a little bit easier for you. Um, I wasn't trying to sway your opinion with you know TMF. They don't sponsor me, they didn't sponsor this video or anything. I just think they provided a really good product and I'm really happy with the chain kit that I decided to go with. But please, if you guys like this video, make sure that you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys have anything to say about this video, whether it sucked or whether you thought it was awesome, please provide that in the comments. You know, I always take your guys' feedback into consideration. So thank you and until next time,